Okay, so today I will show you how to use those hexagonal LED matrix displays, which I think look great, but maybe it's because I like hexagons. Anyway, I have two of those, they are almost identical, it's just the size of those LEDs is slightly different, one has bigger LEDs and the other one has smaller LEDs. Also with one of those you get this diffuser, which is just a sticker, and it works nicely with both displays. Now those LEDs are NeoPixels, the individual addressable RGB LEDs, which means that controlling those should be, or actually will be, very simple. However, what's surprisingly hard is displaying an image, but we will get to it. Before we use those displays, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. And as the name suggests, you can use their services to get to the PCB or even PCB assembly or SMD stencils, or even things like 3D printing, CNC machining and injection molding. If you use the link down in the description of this video, you can get 10 PCBs for free only paying for shipping, so thank you PCBWay, and let's get back to our project. Again, those hexagonal matrix displays use 37 NeoPixel LEDs, so let's try them right away with Arduino Uno. Both of those displays are from the M5 Stack brand and they are meant to be used with the M5 Stack units and that's why you get this type of connector with those displays. We need slightly different connector for Arduino Uno and you can either use jumper wires and just use those jumper wires as a bridge between those connectors and the Arduino Uno female header pins. Or I have found this cable which has the same connector on one end and then the male header pins on the other end. The connection is quite simple, we connect ground to ground, VCC to 5 volts and the data into one of those digital pins on the Arduino Uno. Now since I have used the NeoPixels before in my projects, I believe I was using pin number 6 for no particular reason and I will use the same pin again. So the data in pin should be connected to pin number 6 and the last pin on this cable, the yellow one, is actually not connected to anything. I believe it's there only because it's much easier to get 4 pin connector compared to the 3 pin connector. Maybe, you know, it's possible that the 3 pin connector version does not even exist. On the back of the PCB of the display, we should connect the cable to the connector which says in, which is this one or this one on the version with the smaller LEDs, but it's actually only this one on the version with the bigger LEDs and that's because this bottom one says power only, so the data pin will not be connected. So with everything connected, let's jump to the Arduino IDE. Here I want to install the NeoPixel library from Adafruit, so I'll go to libraries and type in NeoPixel. And it's this one, the NeoPixel from Adafruit, it's already installed, but if you don't have it installed, you have to click the install button, and then close the library tab, and then go to file, examples, Adafruit NeoPixel, and let's for example open the simple example. Before uploading it to the Arduino, we have to make sure that the data pin is set to our pin, which is pin number 6, which seems to be the case, but we have 37 NeoPixels, so I'll change the number of pixels to be 37. And I think that that should be enough, so I'll select our Arduino Uno and click the upload button. And as you can see, those NeoPixels are filling one by one with green color. The arrangement of those LEDs is quite obvious. Those LEDs go from the left side to the right side and jump to the leftmost pixel on every new line, but if it wouldn't be clear, we can open the documentation and you can see that there is an image that shows how those LEDs are arranged. If we want to show some colors, we can try a different Adafruit example. I believe that the sketch, which is called Strand Test, shows some kind of animation, so I'll just open this example. And again, make sure that the LED pin is set to pin number 6 and the LED count is set to 37 and upload it to the Arduino Uno. And now the display is filling with red, greens and blues. And there is some blinking. And I believe there should be also the rainbow animation. Yep, here it is. So we know how to show some simple animations, but what about displaying a custom image? And that's the hard part, because I want to draw an image in some graphic editor and then display it on this display, and that's a problem. And that's because most graphic editors use rectangular grid for pixels, and we cannot use it in our case because our display, as you can see, every second line is offset by half of the pixel. So the workaround is to not say that one pixel on the image is one neopixel, but to draw the image in a slightly bigger size. And I believe that it should be enough to draw the image in a way that one neopixel is represented by 2 by 2 pixels. So let's draw the image. I will go to Photopy. Photopy is a free online graphic editor similar to Photoshop. And in here I will create a new image in the size of 14 by 14 pixels. Because again, I want to represent each neopixel with 2 by 2 pixels. And we have 7 neopixels on one line. And we have 7 lines. Set the background to black color and hit the create button. Then zoom in as much as possible, like so. And I will create a new layer, select the pencil tool, set the size of the pencil only to one pixel, set the foreground color to be some light gray color, for example, like this, and fill four pixels, like this. 
then create a new layer and do the same thing but maybe with some darker color for example like this and again use a pencil tool to fill those four pixels like that and then I'll select both layers and copy those with hitting the alt button on the keyboard and dragging those layers around. Now as you can see we have the three pixels on the left side and three pixels on the right side but if that wouldn't be the case I will select all the layers and just move them around like so so they are centered and then I will create a copy like this and I need one more of those rectangles and then select those five layers and again create a copy I need one more dark layer select those six layers create a copy and so on and so on in the end we should have something that looks like a grid so let's draw some image for example the digit number three and for that I will again select the pencil tool and set the foreground color to be white and then start clicking around to fill those individual areas of those neopixels maybe something like this if I want I can add some color to this layer by double clicking this layer and opening the layer style and then applying the gradient overlay effect and as for the gradient let's for example select this rainbow one and click the ok button and this is the image that we want to show on our display one thing that we want to keep in mind is that we are currently showing two different colors for each neopixel which obviously will not be possible with neopixels let's just pretend that each neopixel only shows one color so let's show this image on the real display now to do that we need to get the RGB value for every single neopixel and we can use the eyedropper tool then click the pixel and write down the RGB values but we have to do this for 37 neopixels and that will definitely take some time so I want to automate this a little bit and for that I will use scripting and thankfully Photopea just like the real Photoshop supports scripting and you can go to file scripts and open the script window and run the script from here there are even some predefined scripts so for example this hello one will show the pop-up window saying hello Photopea the process layers will go over every single layer and set the name and the clone layers will copy the layers but let's stay with the hello world one or hello Photopea one and what we want to do is we want to sample some colors let's quickly close this dialog and I will create a new layer which I will fill with some pink layer for example like this and then I will open this color picker so I can see those RGB values and then again go to file script and we want to get the value of this color and for that we will use color samples so if I open the documentation for the scripting for Photoshop we should be able to add a new color sampler so I'll just copy this code into the clipboard and paste it in here I will change the x and y position of this sampler to be only one and one because I want to sample the top left pixel and then I will actually assign this to a new variable let's call it point sample and let's show this point sample using the alert so using this pop-up window click the run button and we see some object and that's because this is the color object so I want to only show the color of one of those channels and for that I will say color.rgb.red and if I click the run button I can see 255 which seems to be the correct value so let's just copy this two more times and let's also show the green and blue colors click the run button and I can see 255 0 and 192 so this is working as expected but I want to be able to get this color from the photo P and use it in my code in real Photoshop you can save the file or copy the string into the clipboard but that's not possible in Photopy or at least I haven't found a way how to do that so I have to use some workaround because again if I run this script I can see the values but I cannot select them or copy those and the workaround will be using this prompt dialog so in our script I will comment out those alert functions and instead show a prompt dialog and usually this is used for entering the value so if I run the script I will show the dialog and it will say enter the value and here is a place for entering the value but if I provide a second string I can actually set the default value so if I run it again there is this default value and what I can do is I can copy this text this string into the clipboard and then use it in my code so instead of setting the string to default value I can as well set it to the red value of our color like so and then if I run it I can see I have 255 and I can even expand it with the green value and the blue value and if I run it like this I now have access to all three channels of this pixel the last important thing is that once we use this point sample we should delete the color sample by calling the remove all function so I'll just copy this into our script as well make sure it still works and now we can expand the script to go over every single neopixel I will close the dialog as well as the color picker and hide this layer and show the number three and maybe create a new color fill layer with the black color so it will hide all those grids and then we can work on the script file 
Actually, let me show you the final script file and it looks something like this. So in the very beginning, I have the array with all the positions that I want to sample, so the X and Y position for each individual NeoPixel. And it's possible that there is an easier way how to get those positions, but I just hard-coded those inside the array. Then I'm defining the string that will hold all the RGB values. And same as the last time, I'm adding a new color sampler. But instead of adding a new color sampler for every single NeoPixel, I'm adding just one and then moving it using the move function inside the loop because I found out that this solution is a little bit quicker. And then once I get the RGB value, I'm updating the string color string with those RGB values. Once I sample all the NeoPixels, I'm removing this point sampler and then I'm showing this inside the prompt window. So let's run this and see what happens. And we have this copy this dialog, so I'll just copy everything inside this dialog create a new sketch inside the Arduino IDE and paste it up here. And we should have the RGB values for all the individual NeoPixels. So just put this inside the byte array and let's call this hex image like so. And then we want to, of course, set those individual NeoPixels to those RGB values. For that, let me open the simple sketch from the NeoPixel library, which is this one, and put it on the side. And first of all, I want to, of course, include the library in here. Then I want to include the pin definition as well as the number of pixels and initialize the NeoPixel strip like that. Then inside the setup function, I need to call the pixels.begin function. So inside the setup, I will paste the code in here. And then inside the loop, I'll pretty much copy everything like so. But I will remove the delay and set the pixels show to be outside this loop. I want to set all the individual NeoPixels based on the values from this hex image array. And this array has the RGB values for the first pixel, then the RGB values for the second one, and so on and so on. So I need to use the proper index. So those are the RGB values. I will delete those and instead of use the hex image and the index of the red value will be i times 3. The index of the green value will be i times 3 plus 1. And the index of the blue value will be i times 3 plus 2. And I think that's pretty much all that's needed. So I'll click the upload button and see what happens. And indeed, we see the digit number 3 in rainbow colors on our display. So we know how to control the display, we know how to draw an image and show this image on the display. So I think that at this point, the only remaining thing is how to simulate this display in the walkway, which is a free online emulator. And this should be fairly simple, because walkway has support for the Arduino Uno as well as for the NeoPixels. So let's jump to walkway. And in here, create a new project using the Arduino Uno. Now, if you add a new component and you type in a NeoPixel, we have the NeoPixel ring and the NeoPixel single LED. But there is one more component that is not listed in here, but I've already used this in my previous video. And that's this video. I was using this NeoPixel canvas to simulate the Bemeroni display. And if I scroll down and open the walkway sketch, I can go to the diagram.json file and find this part, which is the walkway NeoPixel canvas. And that's the thing that I want to use in my project. So in my project, I will go to diagram.json file and there is a section with parts. I will add a new part, which will be this NeoPixel canvas. But on this NeoPixel canvas, those LEDs are in the rectangular pattern. So what I need to do to simulate our hexagonal display is to use this NeoPixel canvas for every single line and then offset those slightly. So in my project, I will change this number of rows to be only four for the first line and number of columns to be only one. Then I want to rotate it somehow. I'm not quite sure how, so I'll just connect it the way it is right now. So VDD should go to five volts and then the VSS should go to ground and then the data in should go to the digital pin number six. I will jump to the main sketch, jump into the Arduino IDE and copy our sketch into the walkway simulation. So just paste it down in here, but I want to make one small change. I want to fill those pixels with some delay. So I'll add a delay, for example, half a second. And of course, don't forget to call the pixel show function. And then I will run the simulation. It's showing me an error because the NeoPixel library is not included. So I'll click this install Adafruit NeoPixel library button and then click the run button one more time. And as you can see, those pixels are filling from top to bottom, which means that I need to stop the simulation and rotate this component hitting the R key on the keyboard in a way that those connections are on the right side. So if I do it like this and maybe just move those connections around slightly and then restart the simulation one more time, now it's filling from left to right which means that I need to copy this display seven times and have a different number of LEDs. And for that, I will first make a little bit more space for the actual display, like so. Then I will copy and paste this display and jump into diagram.json file and change the number of rows to be five instead of four. 
and try to position it in a way that it's aligned with the top line, which is kind of hard because it's snapping to this grid. If I press the G key, I can see the actual grid. And if I don't want this to snap to the grid, I can move it while the shift key is being pressed. And now it shouldn't be snapping to the grid, so I can just position it right next to the top line. And then I want to connect those together. So VDD, the 5 volts should go to 5 volts. And then the VSS, the ground should go to VSS to ground. And there should be one pin that will be the data out, which is this one. And that will go from the first line. So first line data out will be the data in on the second line, like so. And if I restart the simulation right now, I should see the pixels being filled from the left side to the right side for the first line and then for the second line. And as you can see, there are only two pixels on the second line, which of course matches our image inside Photopy. What I don't like on our sketch is seeing those connections between the first line and the second line, but thankfully there is a solution for that. If I go to diagram.json file, those green lines are those three lines, and what I can do is I can just set the color to none, so empty string, and that will make those connections invisible. If I stop the simulation, they are still there, I can still select those, they are just not visible. So I can now copy and paste the second line, set the number of pixels to be 6, and position it accordingly, and continue like this with all the lines. On the right bottom of the screen, you can see how the display should look like. Again, there are seven lines, so we need seven NeoPixel canvas elements, and the data out from one line is always connected to the data in on the next line. And here comes the moment of truth, so let's run the simulation again. And since we can see our digit number three slowly appearing, we can get rid of the delay and restart it one more time. And we should see the digit number three right away. So this is how you use those hexagonal displays inside the online Arduino emulator and with the Arduino Uno. Now as for the other hexagonal displays, I have only found a few. There is this video from Mohit who built those nice electronic sculptures. And one thing that he built was also this hexagonal LED display, which I think looks kind of cool. This one uses standard 3mm or maybe 5mm one color red LEDs. And then he turns it into this like free form sculpture, which I think looks really great. But again, this is one of very few examples of using hexagonal displays. I mean, LEDs being laid out in a way that they are not in the rectangular grid. If you know about any display that also uses this arrangement, please let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. As always, all the source files are on GitHub. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.